with you in Arizona. You took us to the stadium right here. Yeah. There's like a sold out crowd to see Ted Haggard. Right. I submit my life to the Holy Spirit. And I submit to delegated authority. In Jesus' name. Amen. I lay it up at night in angst over is the fact that I've lost so many friends because of my betrayal of them. And so, but it's me. I mean, I am me, and and so I I, I certainly understand that people can't stand me. I'm glad to see you packed the essentials. No matter how low you go, you can't give up your Fruit Loops and your corn pops. These are Alice's fish. Those fish better live, Ted. No kidding, they better live. You've moved more times this year than most people move in their lifetime. Oh, that's crazy. Here we are again, back in the U-Haul. Back in the U-Haul. Moving one more time, wasting more time. Because we have a home we should be living in in Colorado Springs. But we will again one day. So now what is your life about? It used to be about the church. What's your life about now? Well, the church has said, said go to hell. The, the church chose not to forgive me, but instead to exile me. So what I've got left is my wife and my children. And so what I'll do is try to make life work for them as long as I'm alive. And uh, and then make it so that when I die that there's a little something for Gail to be a sweet old woman with. You're already talking about your death. You're only 51 years old. Well, my dad died at 58. My grandpa died at 58. My great grandpa died at 58. All so you only got seven years left. Right. You better earn some money. You gotta get all your church suits. These are business suits now. You've been married 29 years. If you could marry them all over again, would you? Yes. You would? And it's gonna be better this time around. But the last 29 years have been very fantastic. So how does it feel walking into your new home? Uh, I'm grateful for it, but it's sad because um, I just, I'm grateful for it. I'm, we're, we're gonna, I don't know. It, um, it motivates me to go out and earn a living. I don't, I really don't want my family to be poor. In point two miles, turn right, then right at destination on left. I'm a traveling salesman. So this is my new life. Village Inn, Motel 6 or 8, and uh, helping people get decent insurance. Uh, hi, Philip. This is Ted, the health insurance guy. I'm available uh, anytime. I sell health insurance that's commission sales. So if I don't make the sale, there's no income. It's the cost of half of a pizza. You're only paying $12 a month for it. Oh, now I left you some pie the other night. Did you eat it? Yeah. Good. Was it good? Oh, yeah. By the way, you have a lovely wife. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're starting to see 
now that when I'm out here by myself, I could end up crying. Let the water sit. And when God began um, creating... I, I, I know this Bible. Oh, what do you know about it? Yeah. It's a it's the Living Bible. They they put a lot of these out. This is a Jesus Movement Bible from the seventies. Oh really? So what's yeah. that mean? Good or bad? It's or very good. Yeah. He's been he's on national TV. You know, yeah. I mean, it's you know, he's just been on. So I recognize him. That's all. You don't get a celebrity here every day. He got in trouble with somebody. A fall from grace, if you will. That's all. So he let it shine for a while. Now you have to take that for whatever it means. For a while. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't say twenty four hours. Mm -mm. Well, it just shocked me. It took me, but I guess these things happen, you know. I just wanted to talk more about evangelicalism than I did insurance, I suppose, and that's not what he's here for. Philip, when do you want me to call you? I don't know. I can't do nothing this month. I can tell you do that. Do you want me sure. to call you the next month? I just can't afford it right now. I'm just literally not going to make the end of the month. I know. This is insanity. This is all I can do. This is the only company that would let me work for it. It's not as if I had a choice. I didn't make any money this week. Lost money big time. Lost money I don't have. I'm gonna have to borrow. Got no money in savings. So in this stage of my life, I'm a loser. First class loser. Now all of us know Christians that are sometimes disappointing. Our responsibility is not to judge them. Our responsibility is to be Christians who are not disappointing. We have to confess we are intrinsically sinful and we need forgiveness for this so that we can have confidence, so that we can have a clear conscience, so that we can talk to God, so that we can receive forgiveness in ourselves and from others, so that we can walk in the joy that God has for us. Look, Arizona side, here's the Nevada side. Right here on this bridge is where you can see the difference. This is no moral restraint from the law, and this is moral restraint from the law. <laughs> here's gonna be gambling, here's gonna be prostitution, here's gonna be porn. Over there, there's, there's, if there's gambling going on, it's a secret meeting behind a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you and I are coming here for dinner, and that's it. Then we're out of here. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Oh, time to work. Good morning, Karen. Yeah, I'd like to be able to earn some money at this, though. I know. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm not mentally ill. However, I did have some things in my mind from childhood that were extremely powerful. Now I've learned. And, uh, and then I chose to... Well, I don't know about that, because I warred against it. But now I know I'm healthy enough I can make a choice about those types of things, and I'm fine. That's no excuse. I'm guilty. I was doing things. I'm a sinner. I was doing things contrary to what the Bible teaches and what I believe. I'd still be, rather be the way I am now, though, and broke and a man of disrepute than the way I was, and have that horrific internal struggle that I had. I was very suicidal for a while. I thought I was ruining Gail and ruining my children and ruining anybody that had ever loved me or trusted me. I thought I was a negative influence in the world and that the world would be better off without me. And the Bible says that Jesus came for the unrighteous. The Bible says that when one sheep wanders off, that Jesus will leave the 99 sheep that are together and go pursue the one. I was that one. 
So do you read the Bible differently now? Every day, and it means a totally different thing in the midst of suffering than it means. And to, to, to when you're in delight, you find portions of it that speak to delight and joy. When you're in suffering and pain, you find portions that speak to suffering and pain. When you struggle, you find portions that speak to that. It speaks to everything. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies those who seek to destroy me. You know how I am scorned, disgraced, and shamed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. Come quickly, O oh my God, to help me. Lord!